kickoff verse, I'll call it, our springboard verse, uh, as we consider this matter of prayer. And I, the Lord's been laying a few things on my heart concerning prayer that I would like for us to do as a church, but we'll get to that later. Uh, but, but prayer is what will make any day go better. It's what will make any life go better. It's what will hold a family together. Uh, prayer is what will glue a church together. And I've seen here over the years, the few years that I've been here, how that a praying church stays together. It, 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 it's, like a, it's like a cement uh, when there is prayer to be made for others and when there's a, a bond of fellowship, and that is usually centered around prayer. But in Acts chapter number 4, in verse number 31, we read this verse of Scripture. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. These things happened after prayer. Uh, after you pray, after I pray, we see God work after we pray. Uh, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. Uh, if we want something for, from the Lord, you know, we ask him, and we ask according to his will, and we don't ask according to our own lust or our own desires, that it might bring uh, something, you know, just for us to, uh, to have, but we do it so that God might be glorified. And whatever he does for us, we ought to be grateful to the Lord and, and express our gratefulness when he has answered our prayer. And you do that. Many, many folks do that. But sometimes I'm not as, you know, I, I might not be grateful enough when the Lord answers my prayer. Look, if you pray, if you pray, uh, of a night before you go to sleep, God give you a good night's rest, and you get up and you've had a, uh, you know, you've had a decent night's rest, and you ought to thank the Lord for letting you wake up, Amen. Letting you open your eyes, and uh, many times we take those things for granted. But prayer, uh, the Bible says here, the place was shaken after that they had prayed, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Now, friend, if we're living in the day we're living in. Uh, when ever listen, you, this is a big this is a big world we live in. But statistically, every five minutes, somewhere around the world, a Christian is dying because of their faith. That's the average every five minutes. So tonight, if I take twenty minutes, thirty minutes tonight, four, four or five or six people are going to die persecuted. You say, well, I, it doesn't happen around here. Now, I don't know that, you know, I, I know it's not an open thing here, but I'm wondering even in our country how many people that are uh, persecuted for their faith wind up, uh, you know, wind up dead because of their faith. I don't know that it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen around here as far as we know. Uh, but but the truth be known, in, in countries where Christianity has not been, you know, ha, has not been promoted and where it is trying to be established and where people want to be Christians, then they're, they're, you know, they're being persecuted for that. And in this day that we live in, we ought to learn to pray. We ought to learn. Uh, you know, the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And uh, he gives them the model prayer. But we ought to learn to pray. We ought to want to pray. We want to have a desire to pray. Uh, the, the Spirit's willing, but many times the flesh is weak when it comes to prayer. Uh, a hundred different things will come to your mind when you determine that you're going to start praying. I know how it is. I know how it works. Uh, you'll get, you, you might even make it to the place, you know, you even make it to the place and the time where you're going to pray. And you begin to pray and, and everything in the world is going to come into your mind. The problems of the day, somebody else's problems, something else that you're uh, concerned about. And, and, uh, and you, you begin to try to pray, and those things flood your mind, and you'll find your mind wandering off in all different directions. Am I right? Say amen. amen. Well, I'll tell you, I've learned the solution. I've learned what to do when that happens. If I'll, just stay with, if I'll just stay in prayer and stay there for a little bit and just keep praying and be persistent in prayer, then finally what will happen, the devil will go away and leave me alone and I'll talk to the Lord. Amen. I'll talk to the Lord. And if, I'm just, if I just uh, determine in my heart, I'm going to pray till I, till I know I'm praying. And then I'll pray. And it, it becomes much easier then. So when these disciples were gathered together and when they come together and uh, they called out to the Lord, they prayed, the place was shaken where they were at. And friend, that's what we need to look for and what we need to desire 
in our prayer life that when we pray, we see something happen. We see the Lord moving. We see the Lord working and see him doing something in our life. So as we did on Sunday night, we're going to do this for another uh, tonight, and they say probably not for the be, be Sunday Sunday week before we do this again. Uh, so uh, tonight we're going to go a few more verses into prayer. Prayer, it, and it's uh, you know in all its uh, words, and and I, I tried to look for another word there, and I forgot to look for it because I thought about another word. But pray and uh, pray, pray and prayest, and pray, pray and prayer, praying and prayest. Yeah, those, all of those words, five hundred times in the. Uh, Bible as a total, and a, a whole lot of those to where it is talking about pray, just just the word pray, is not in the same context as you and I use pray, and we don't use the same word that they use them when we ask somebody to do something. And uh, uh, I was I was asking Brother Max got a chainsaw I need, and uh, I pray you, Brother Max, can I borrow your chainsaw? Now, that ain't what I'd say. I'd say, hey, Max, can I borrow your chainsaw? I wouldn't say, I pray thee, uh, I need to use your chainsaw. I'd say, I'd go to Max, and, and, and Max don't know if I use a chainsaw good or not, so he might say, well, I don't know how you use a chainsaw, so no, you can't have my chainsaw. Or Max may say, well, just be careful with it and let me have his chainsaw. I told my uncle that one time, he said, don't you cut a nail with it. And I was cutting a tree that I had no idea was a nail in it. Guess what I did? I cut a nail with that with that chain right in the middle of that tree how in the world whoever drove it in there a hundred years ago have there's a big locust tree and i cut it right through a nail he i went took it back to him he said you dull i said cut through a nail with it and he said that about figures and and uh and uh, he went on about his business but anyway now max says i'll never let you use my chains on amen <laughs> Or I'll have to give him a deposit for a new chain. But, but, I, but I use that as, a, as just how you ask someone, you entreat someone for something, or you ask them. And, and many times you'll find that if you look up that word pray and you see it in the Old Testament, it'll say, I pray thee. Uh, and, and that's just like saying, uh, I, I beg you, uh, please let me, you know. And that's why that many times that word pray. But the other words, pray, uh, praying and prayest, uh, these have to do with our prayer life, with our uh, calling upon the Lord. All right, you got your Bible. Someone again read Second Chronicles chapter seven in verse number fourteen. We read that already. Let's read that again. All right. And the first one to get that, read that. The recipe for revival. I call, that's what I call that verse. God's recipe for revival. And the center part of that recipe for revival, the main ingredient in that recipe for revival is pray. Uh, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And friend, you start out in that order and you pray and you seek the face of God, then God will heal. Again, he will hear us and he will heal. Now, again, we're living in the day when we need to pray. We're living in the day when our prayer life uh, needs to be an exceptional prayer life. And I, I, I understand that uh, many times that requires some work on our part because of the old flesh. But we're living in a day when we should pray more. And we're living in such a day when we need revival in our churches. We need revival in our persons. Uh, we need to be stirred up as never before for the things of the Lord. So memorize that verse. Commit that verse to memory. And all right, someone on my right side over here, look up Psalms chapter number 5 and verse number 2. Uh, someone in the middle, just whoever gets to it first, look up Psalm 32, 6. And someone on my left-hand side, read John 4, 16. On the right-hand side, 5, 22. The middle, 32, verse 6 in Psalms. And on my left, John 14 and verse number 6. And we'll start with Psalms 5 and verse number 2 on my right. Whoever gets to that first. My king and my God, that's who you pray to. That is the, that is the object of your prayer. 
that is who we focus our prayer to is my God and my King. Now, idolaters will pray to anything. They will set up altars and pray to anything. Idolaters will pray to rocks. They will pray to trees. Uh, I visited him one time, and, I, and you know, I, I, I said earlier, I, you know, I, we, I used to be in, uh, you used to have a prayer, a rock altar where we'd go pray. Uh, but I was visiting door to door in the community where I was at, and, and I knocked on this one fellow's house, real strange character. And uh, he says, I pray up there in the trees. I thought, yeah. Uh, somebody probably have to fly up there and get you back down too because I think he was about buzzed when I talked to him. But that was his prayer life. That was the way he was praying. And I thought, you know, me and you don't know the same person to pray to. And uh, many people do pray to trees. They'll pray to rocks. They'll pray to objects. But you and I should pray to a person and only one person, and that's God in heaven. Amen. That's, he should be the... Uh, he, should, he should receive our prayers, and he will. If we'll call upon him, our God and our king, he will hear our prayers, and he will answer our prayers. All right, someone who in the middle there has uh, Psalms 32 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he makes Psalms um, saying to you, and Amen, amen, pray. In our time of need, in our time of, of uh, uh, our, in our time of want, whenever that the, the opportunity is there, we pray. Now you think about it. How many missed opportunities did I have today to pray? How many opportunities did I miss? Uh, and how many did did you miss today to pray? This is serious matter. This is serious business when we talk about praying. And so we we pray when, and 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 what will happen is. And I've experienced it in my own life. When I begin to think on prayer, I'll begin to pray more. When I have that, when I have that thought on my mind of praying, I will pray more. And sometimes those things, because of the cares of, the life, of this life, when it shouldn't make us pray even more, that part should. But sometimes it works the other direction, and we don't pray near like we should because we got too much else on our minds. And so we, we should pray. We should call on the Lord. Uh, John chapter 14 and verse 6. I'm sorry, verse 16. John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. Now, Jesus is saying, I will pray the Father. Now, that word pray in that context means that he is talking to the Father. He is, he is praying to the Father. He says, I will pray the Father. And he will send you another comforter. Now, friend, that other comforter is the Holy Spirit of God. That other comforter is what lives inside me and what lives inside you. And so when we think of it like that, when we pray, we are praying not to someone that's a, in, in a distance. But we're praying to the Spirit of God that, that dwells within us. And he knows our thoughts. He, and, and that's why we, we, are not have, we don't have to verbally Pray we, we, when we can pray in our minds, pray in our, in our thoughts, in our conscience, we can pray. And that, that comforter that lives within, inside us knows what we're praying before we even ask, uh, before we even pray, before we even call on him, that comforter. And, friend, I'm glad that he lives in me. I, I, I feel for those people that go day in and day out without the comfort of the Holy Spirit of God in this, you know, this perilous days that we live in many go without the comfort of the spirit of god because they don't have the comforter inside them and without that friend there's you know uh, wh wh what fills that hollow spark uh, that hollow uh, spot in their uh you know inside of them what fills that the things of the world the flesh and the devil and that's what fills that but you and i as jesus said i'm, I'm praying the father i'm praying that he'll send the uh, that another comforter will come to you, and he has come. He is there, that person of the Holy Spirit of God. All right, uh, Psalms chapter number 55 and verse number 17 on my right, and in the middle, Romans eight twenty six. Uh, 
And on my left, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. When did he say? The psalmist said when? Evening, morning, and at noon. Now, if you eat three meals a day, you're going to accomplish that anyway. You're going to accomplish that. But I believe you take it a little bit, a little bit farther here, and you, of course, ask God to bless your food. But then maybe after you've eaten that food or maybe if you're alone, you take a little more time while you're praying and you talk to the Lord a little bit. That, that's, a, you know, that's, a good, that's a good solution. That's a good way uh, to meet that, do what the Word of God says the psalmist did and pray three times a day. Uh, pray around your food. Now, I, you know, I don't encourage people to go into a red. Now, if you don't do it, it's all right, but I don't encourage it to go into a restaurant and, and uh, uh, raise a big ruckus praying, you know, if you feel like, you know, if the Lord lays it on your heart, then you do that. But it makes people awfully uncomfortable and it makes you awfully uncomfortable. I, I know, I know, and I've never been around, I don't know what I would, you know, I'm not criticizing it, it's just not what I would do. Uh, but a fellow, he would, every time he'd go to a restaurant to pray, I think he wound up eating a lot by himself too. But they'd, if they asked him to pray over the meal, man, he'd stand up and he'd pray about 20 minutes, just as loud as he could go praying, right there in the middle of the restaurant. Well, I, you know, uh, there's a time and there's a place, I'm guessing. But if, you know, if, if you want to do that, it's fine. I don't encourage that. But if that's the way the Lord would lead you to do it, then that would be fine to do it that way. But in some time during the middle of the day, pray. Pray when you get up in the morning. Pray when you go to bed at night. Pray in the evening. Pray three times as a, you know, as a psalmist at least. Um, now you say, well, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Well, if you pray three times a day, I'm going to tell you something. If you pray, you're more likely to be in a, a place where in the middle of that afternoon when something goes haywire in your life, you'll be able to call out to the Lord because you've maintained constant communication with him all day. That's what pray without ceasing is. You are... And now, I said the other night, I said, uh, me and my wife sit around at night, and sometimes we don't say nothing to each other. She ain't mad at me, I ain't mad at her. But I'm right there, and we communicate. And if, if she wants to say something to me, she says it to me, and I'm listening. I'm, you know, it's, it's that close communication between you and the Lord. And if you do, if you maintain a, a morning, uh, no, morning, noon, and evening prayer, then you'll find yourself a much better place at other times to call upon the Lord because you, you will, you know, like I say, you won't get a prayer through if there's sin in your heart. So, you know, before you can pray and talk to the Lord, you got to ask forgiveness of sin. So if you maintain that prayer life, then, friend, you'll be in a, in a constant, you know, you're a constant state of prayer where you can get a hold of the Lord just at any moment you can talk to the Lord. All right, uh, I forgot the next verse. What did I tell somebody? In the middle. Romans 8, 26, all right. Whoever's got that, go ahead and read. Amen, amen. Now, I'm sure you all understand that. Sometimes you get down to pray and you have no idea what to ask the Lord. You don't know what, somebody asks you to pray and you just don't know. I mean, you don't know. And maybe you've been burdened before and you get down to pray and you've been so burdened before and you don't know what to ask. Lord, I don't know. God, I have not the words to pray. I have not the, and, and you, 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 might just, you might just groan, but God knows you're groaning. Lord, help us. You know, the psalmist, sometimes that's all he could cry out was, Lord, help us. Lord, help. Help, Lord. And there's nothing wrong with that because God knows. He knows the thoughts and intents of our heart. And when we pray, as we, sometimes we know not what to pray. Uh, people ask me to pray for things for, and I say, Lord, I don't know what to ask you to do. Lord, I don't know. I, you know, I just don't know what to ask you to do. But, God, you know what needs to be done and Lord help. 
And I and I've heard I've heard people, you know, I've heard I had an aunt, aunt that uh, walk up and down the road at night, and she was praying for her youngins is who she's praying for. But you didn't know what she was praying. She just, oh Lord, oh Lord. Now listen, sometimes that's that's all I know to do is say, oh Lord. But you know what? God knows exactly what's what He knows your heart, and He knows what you're going through. He knows. You know, he knows your sufferings. He knows the burdens of your heart. And even though you might not have the words to say. See, that's what I like about prayer. I don't have to worry about what I say to the Lord because he understands what I'm trying to say. Because he knows my heart. So that, that's how, you know, that's how many times we pray because he knows our hearts. And sometimes it's with, with just groanings and, uh, uh, you know, murmuring, just things that we don't know how to how to tell God about but God knows so we pray we just say Lord help us and God knows our prayer all right uh first Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 someone read that <clears throat> on my left I think I called that one how simple is that we just talked about that a minute ago pray without ceasing <laughs> now I, I used to have you know I used to wonder about that Lord I can't walk around with my head bowed all the time. I can't, you know, I can't uh, be bowed on my knees all the time to pray. Lord, I've got to work. There's things I have to do. So how can I pray without ceasing? How can I do that? How can I, how can I make that happen in my life? Even while I, when I'm asleep. Have you ever, has anybody ever woke up praying? I mean, I woke up in the middle of the night praying and, and, and talking to the Lord in my, in, in my subconscious when I didn't even know what I was doing. I woke up, I woke up praying and, and, and asking the Lord to help. And for some reason, or I woke up with my youngins on my heart before and prayed for my youngins or, or some other matter. I, I woke up in the middle of the night uh, praying to the Lord for, uh, you know, over a church matter or something. And, and when you, when you are, are so that any moment you can talk to the Lord, you, that's, that's praying without ceasing. You're any moment you can call out to God and you know that he's, that he's hearing you. Uh, now, some people could talk constantly. I can't. I make a good stab at it, but I can't talk constantly. Uh, but some people might, you know, might could beat me at talking a little bit. But if, if, if it, it, what goes on in our minds between us and God is, is that, you know, is, is God knowing our heart at any moment, if I am, have the ability to call on God, then I'm praying without ceasing. I'm, I'm saying, Lord, this is the day. God, help me today. And any moment through the day that I need to call upon God, uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord. Now, when I sin, immediately, Lord, forgive me. In my heart, the Holy Spirit of God convicts me when I do wrong. And he convicts you when you do wrong. The worst thing you and I can possibly do when we're convicted of sin, the worst thing we can do is to let that go. The best thing we can do is to call out to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. I know I was wrong. God, forgive me. And get that thing. Why? Because that will, that, if you continue on with that and don't call out to the Lord, don't pray to God and ask for forgiveness, then that will, that will hinder you. Uh, until that's gone, that will stop your prayer life. So we, uh, to pray without ceasing, we keep a clean heart, we keep a clean mind, and we say, Lord, uh, help me to, to be able to be in constant uh, fellowship, in constant uh, conversation with you. Pray without ceasing. All right, uh, let's look here. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 25, on my right, uh, 1 Timothy 2, 8 in the middle, and James 5, 16 on my left. <clears throat> and we begin with 1 Thessalonians 5, 25 when you get that first. <clears throat> Brethren, pray for us. And there was a request of Paul. And he was requesting prayer. Now, if you run out of anything else to pray for, amen, pray for us. Uh, pray for me. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. 
But that's a desire, it should be the desire of every Christian to desire everybody to pray for. Now, if I'm praying for you, if everybody in here is praying for me and I'm praying for everybody in here, you know, and everybody else is praying for it, you look at the prayer that goes up. You look, how, you look at the prayer that goes up for God's people when we're all just in prayer for each other. And uh, uh, it, 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 sometime through the day, God may lay someone in particular on your heart. And you just bow your head and say, Lord, help them. God, help them do something for them. Their need of something. The Holy Spirit of God lay things on your heart. I, I've prayed for folks before, and, and uh, you'll call out to the Lord, and then maybe a week later, you know, they say, man, I had a rough week last week. I had something, something was going on last week. And you find out, you know, you was praying for them. You didn't know what, but they was having a rough time. They needed somebody to lift them up to the Lord. So if God lays a person on your heart, then you pray for him. Lord, help him. Uh, I've, I had a, I've got a good friend, and, and uh, it ain't been too long back. He called me up, and I hadn't talked to him in a while, and he called me up and said, I just want you to know I, I'm, I'm praying for you. And he was a, I was having a rough time. And he called me up and said, I just want you to know I'm praying for you today. And you know what encouragement that is? And, and, and that's what we should do. We should pray for each other. As a family of believers, as a local assembly, as a, as a local church, then when we pray, we ought to lift each other up to the Lord in prayer. Say, Lord, help us. And then we ought to pray for our Sunday services while we're praying. Pray for us. Pray for us to have a good service. Pray for us that the devil wouldn't get involved here uh, in our services. And just pray. Pray for us. Paul says, pray for us. And so that's what we, uh, we should endeavor to do. All right, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and verse 8 in the middle there. I will therefore that men pray and request, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. Pray everywhere. Men everywhere pray. Uh, this is a big world. There's a lot of Christians in this world. But you know what? God can hear every prayer that I pray. He can hear every prayer that you pray. He can forgive every sin that we're confessing, even at one time. He can distinguish between my prayer and your prayer. And he can, he can answer my prayer individually, and he can answer your prayer individually. Now, boy, ain't that, you know, that, ain't that encouragement to know that when we pray, men can pray everywhere. But God in heaven is a big enough God to understand my prayer and understand your prayer. And he knows how to answer us and give us individual uh, you know, give us individual treatment when we pray. So I would that men everywhere would pray. Pray everywhere. And friend, I believe in my own life, I think my biggest neglect is my prayer life, and I've admitted that before. But I believe that is my, my biggest neglect is my prayer life. And I'm saying, Lord, help me to pray. And, I, and if, we can, if we can all get to the place where, Lord, we're going to pray more, and we just pray a little more, and we see the difference God makes in our lives and in our churches, I'm sure that will encourage us even more to pray. The more I pray, the more I want to pray. And, and that's, a, that's something the devil don't like. That's why he fights your, your prayer life. He fights you in two ways every day. He fights you reading the Word of God because that's God talking to us, and he fights you praying to God because that's how we communicate to the Lord. Now, we read his word, he communicates to us. We pray to him, we communicate with him. In any way, the devil can either make that a one-sided conversation uh, where we're not talking to God, but we are listening. See, it, it's got to go both ways. That's how, that's how sometimes we understand Scripture. We read a Bible verse or we read a passage of Scripture. Say, Lord, I need to know something about this. And God will enlighten us again through his word. And we speak to him and God speaks to us. So, so therefore, we ought... Uh, we ought to pray. All right, uh, James chapter number 5 and verse number 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. <coughs> the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Not a little bit, but it availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Look, look what God can do with our prayers. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Think what God can do when we are fervent in prayer 
And righteous just being right with God. When we're right with God and we're praying fervently to the Lord and God answers that prayer and it, avail it, it, is, it is to our benefit. It is to, it is to others' benefit. And it brings glory to God when we pray to him and when we fervently uh, call out to him. You ever talk to someone and you knew you didn't have their attention? That kind, of, that kind of bugs me. Does it bug you when you're trying to talk to someone and you know they're not paying you no attention? And uh, I've accused people of doing that before and they heard every word I said and they were paying me attention. They just had the ability to pay two or three things attention at one time. But I'm still, of the, I'm still of the belief that if you're going to pay somebody attention, you know, you need to have their attention. They need to be, you know, when we, when we pray to God, the, uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When God, when I'm praying, God has my attention. Uh, even though you may be praying, or you may be praying, or you may be praying at the same time, God's got my attention. But guess what? He's got your attention. He's that kind of God. And when we're fervently praying and we know God's got, our, God's got our attention and we've got God's attention and we're calling upon God, it's just like there's nobody else in the world but me and him. And that's the way it should be. And we fervently pray to the Lord. Uh, and sometimes it's about, you know, maybe, maybe about anything, but we pray to the Lord. We should be fervent in our prayer life concerning lost people. That should be one of our most fervent prayers is for lost people because they're all around us. They're all around our neighborhoods. They're all around our communities. They're all around our workplace. And we should be fervent about praying for lost people. We should be fervent about praying for our missionaries that go where you and I will never get to go and spread the word of God. We should be fervent. Of, Lord, help our missionaries. We should be fervent about our church. Lord, help our church. God, bless our church. And uh, God, uh, you know May ever service we can fervently pray, Lord, may ever service we have at Gables Creek Baptist Church be full of the Holy Spirit of God. The fervent prayer of a righteous man, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And you pray, and it avails much, and you watch and see what God will do in your life and in, in, in my life. All right, I've gave you about, I don't know, eight or ten verses of Scripture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 verses of scripture to think about the rest of the week. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Um, there's many more, and I've got much more. It'll take two or three more services to do all of this. But I've got two, maybe three pages of notes here, uh, all concerning prayer. And you say, well, well preacher, uh, are, is, are you not going to kind of, over I don't think we could ever overkill talking about prayer and preaching about prayer. Because the more we do it, the more we want to do it. Now, I challenge you between now and Sunday, I challenge everybody in here between now and Sunday to spend five extra minutes in prayer a day praying for each other and praying for our church. Five minutes. That's all, five minutes. Uh, out, of, out, of your, uh, out of your day, take five minutes to pray for the church and pray for each other. And you watch how the Lord will bless. Amen. Anyone else got anything now before we dismiss? Oh my goodness. And I just thank God because uh, right before that had happened, I just, he told me, he said, my brother, he said, I'll be there as quick as I can, the road is quick out there. So I just said, God, you know, watch them and pray for them so they can be saved. And I feel like that prayer just helped. Amen. He first to get my well, sure. Amen. 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 Appreciate that testimony. Anyone else? If God answers prayer, always be sure to give him glory. Amen. Give him credit. Anyone else? All right. Let's stand and we'll be dismissed. Thank you for coming tonight. Do remember our Sunday morning service and pray that God would bless us 
here at the house of the Lord. All right? You're standing. You're dismissed. Come back Sunday. Good night and God bless you.